So this is one of my security camera monitors in my house and I have the output of my security system, my DVR, going into a converter that converts it over to composite video and then into an RF modulator where I modulate that signal onto UHF antenna TV channel 14. As well, I have two Dish Network VIP 722Ks set up on channels 21, 23, 25 and 27. So if I change this monitor over to channel 27, as you can see I get my DISH network there, no problem. 25, that's the other channel of the DISH network, but look what happens when I go to 23. I get nothing. 21, the same thing. And I believe that RF output module in the DISH network receiver is what's causing my interference on channel 14. I do even occasionally see interference on 25 or 27. So I think something's going on in there with the RF modulator in my DISH network receiver. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it apart and see if I can figure out what's happening with it. If you look really close over here, you can see me waving. Okay, so here is my Dish Network VIP 722 receiver. I've had it since 2010. Maybe I should take the plastic off of it one of these days, but no, I haven't taken it off yet. It sits over in my AV cabinet. Nothing really touches it. I have a remote extender connected to it, so it really doesn't have to do much. And I do have the over-the-air uh, antenna tuner in it, so I can get my HD channels and DVR those as necessary but this is the problem that I'm having right now the home distribution output um, channels 21 to 69 air like I said this receiver outputs on channel 21 and 23 air but it's totally distorted there's no video there whatsoever and it just happened within the last couple of weeks so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing apart and see what I can see inside there it goes and we're in all right so let's focus on the power supply over here what do I see so kind of hard to see on the camera but I have two caps here that are bulged and leaking very slightly and man are they hot to the touch holy crap like every cap over here is just burning up these two caps right here as well are bulged I think they're just used up. Well, so we're going to have to pull this board out of this thing and check all these caps and see what shape they're in. There's the hard drive. sits under this cover right here. And look at this. This is interesting. Tampering with the seal voids the warranty. Well, I guess my warranty is void then. It's not attached to anything. So now over here, they do have a cooling fan to cool the hard drive. I've got the board out. I would check those five capacitors that were bulged. So here's one, it's right at zero ohms. Now these may have other caps in parallel. That one's at zero. But look at that one. It's like half an ohm. Same way, same way. So three of those at half an ohm is probably each one at one and a half ohms or even worse. So I'm gonna have to pull all five of these caps out and check them out of the circuit and see how they check. They are 2700 microfarad 16 volt caps. So these two are the two that were separated. These three were all together. Let me double check my meter that it is at zero and it is. Uh, just under two ohms, definitely bad for that value. Right at two ohms, definitely bad. Those were the two that were separated. These are the three that were together. Doesn't even hardly move the needle in the thousands of ohms range. Same thing. It moves it when I flick them together, but other than that, that's all the movement I get. Bad. Bad. So let's go ahead and replace all those. Well now the original ones were 2700 microfarad 16 volts. I don't have any 2700s. I do have a couple of 2200s at 16 Nichicons and they are 105 Celsius rated capacitors. And then I have three more Panasonic 2200 at 16 and they're once again 105 Celsius rated caps. So we're just going to have to put these in and hope for the absolute best. Now I've ESR'd some other caps on the board which I'm going to be checking here in just a moment once we get them out of the circuit. So you saw 
how when these three capacitors were in the circuit, it was showing about a half an ohm or so. And once I took them out, they were in the thousands of ohms. So that's one reason why you need to unsolder one lead of every capacitor so they're not loaded with the rest of the circuit if you're gonna test these things. So here's a couple more caps I pulled out. 820 microfarad, 6.3 volts. That's ESR, both of those. Now those appear to be on the satellite input amplifier assembly. This one checks fine, zero ohms, but I marked this one on the top as bad because it's bulged. About 40 ohms, definitely bad. So let's change those out. So I have a couple of 820 at 25 volts they're gonna have to do because this unit is slated for replacement within the next year or so. So if it just hangs on for another six to eight months, maybe 10 months, they're probably gonna replace this with the hopper. But I wanna get as much life out of this unit as I possibly can. So let's put those in. So I have the new caps in place. So what I'm gonna do is solder the single lead first. Once the solder is set, I'm gonna bend the other leads up to make sure there's no stress on the capacitor body. Now I'm gonna heat up this lead and move it straight. There we go, no stress on the capacitor body. And then we'll trim the leads. There we go. Now there's a three terminal regulator right here and an input and an output cap. I might have them reversed because it's upside down, but we're gonna go ahead and take those out and check those as well. And it's very close to the RF modulator, which is right here. And I already have these caps unsoldered over here. We're gonna go ahead and change all of those because they are very close proximity to the RF modulator. So let's go ahead and change those out. So C182 and C220 are the input and output filter caps. 220 at 10 volts and another 220 at 10. So let's ESR those out of the circuit. So here is the first one. It's one and a quarter ohms. That's definitely bad. Second one, uh, closer to one and a half ohms. Definitely bad. All right, by comparison, here's a brand new 220 at 10. Um, just under a quarter ohm, I'd say. And here's the second, 220 at 10. Another quarter ohm. So we'll go ahead and solder those in place. So I almost passed this over and didn't change the caps in it, but this is the RF modulator. This modulates two separate channels of either UHF or cable TV output in standard definition, of course. But if we look at that, it's got two separate little TV transmitters in it. And look at that. There's a couple of 100 microfarad capacitors, 6.3 volts there. So with my ESR meter set up here, if I measure from the capacitor lead, to the ground, I get zero ohms. That looks really good, but if I measure the cap itself, it does not even move the needle. Same thing on this side, to ground, zero. Measure the cap, absolutely open. Doesn't even move the needle a little tiny bit. So we'll go ahead and change those guys out as well. So here's the two caps out of the circuit, and we'll just measure those guys and they're absolutely open. There's the second one. No movement at all. So I'm glad I pulled that modulator out and checked it. So here's the replacement caps I have, but the problem is they're not gonna clear the lid. So I'm gonna have to just take them and lay them down inside. But I'm gonna test the new caps. Uh, about three-fourths of an ohm. And the second one is about one ohm. Way better than open. So here is the RF modulator. New caps in place and they're laid down in there so that we'll make sure that the lid fits completely on it. So just in case you have an RF modulator that you need to change the caps in and you can't, here is the part number off of the case. I've got it all put back together now and we'll go ahead and put it back in the receiver. Well, there it is, 22 capacitors got changed. Every single one of these ESR'd bad out of circuit, but the majority of them tested good in circuit. Starting with the smart card and moving back it's the power supply, the high current power supply to run the receiver when it's actually on. And then if we keep going over here, I believe this is the modem portion of the unit. Back here we've got the ethernet connector, the phone, the HDMI output, 
Uh, several of these capacitors got changed in this neighborhood. There's the RF modulator. You can even see one of the capacitors I changed standing up through one of the holes. Now over here are the dish receiver amplifiers for the dual LNB. Some processing going on with those. And we're back into some more power supply action over here. Assembled in China. Yeah, how could I not have figured that part out? Front panel connections right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at these power supply circuits real quick. Some buck boost converters. Right there's where the hard drive connects. Some more power supply circuitry. There is the main control right there, the Broadcom chip. Some more power supply components. Whenever you see a big cap like that, you can almost bet it's in the power supply circuitry. There's a couple of the caps I replaced, and we, we went ahead and checked virtually every capacitor on this circuit board. And like I said, I replaced 22 of those guys. And so right over here, this is where the fan connects. I went ahead and checked all the associated components just in case the fan was not running. And we checked all these little caps down here. Went ahead and changed those three on the left of the modulator. I changed those two capacitors for the linear regulator as well as these three capacitors on the back right here. And I did go ahead and change these two large capacitors here. They were, one of them was bad and one of them was good. I don't want to take any chances. So I'm just getting ready to reassemble this unit and I looked at the screws I took out. I didn't pay attention when I removed them. But I really thought they would have used machine thread instead of like these little tamper screws. Come on, Dish Network, get it together. Well, here are my security cameras. No interference. Everything looks great. Let's check the Dish channels. 27. 25. And now we get 23 and 21. Everything's working absolutely perfectly. It looks great. No interference whatsoever. The picture is crystal clear for standard definition. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed this video on repairing the Dish Network VIP 722K receiver for no RF output. If this video has helped you, please consider making a donation on my YouTube homepage with the PayPal donate button or at paypal.me slash norcal715. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and ring that bell to get future notifications. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.